Hello students, it's Dr. Sansom here to talk about investigating chemical reactions. And today in lab, there's a variety of things that you're going to be doing. This is a really fun lab. You get to do a lot of different reactions. But the main goal for doing this lab is for you to be able to look at the reaction that's happening in front of you and then relate it to what's happening at the molecular level. That is non-intuitive. And it's one of the great challenges in chemistry is to really picture what's happening at the molecular level when you see something happening in a beaker in front of you. And so that's what we want you to focus on today. We're hoping that you'll be able to support con conclusions about what's happening at the macroscopic level based on your observations, and then also relate that to the chemical reaction. So what the products are of the chemical reaction and identifying those based on their physical and chemical properties. We also want you to write balanced chemical equations and our process skill for today is gonna be information processing. And this is similar to what we did last week where you're really trying to interpret information that's macroscopic and see what's happening at the molecular level. But this time you have a lot more reactions to do. So we're gonna be looking at all of these different reactions today. Last time we just did the single replacement, but today we're gonna to be looking at all five types. And so I want you to pause and take a minute to look at these generic forms that we've written here and see if you just knew the reactants, if you only know the reactants, which is what's gonna happen in lab, you know what you're mixing together. Um, if you only know the reactants, can you narrow it down based on what the reactants are to the types of reactions that could occur in lab? So go ahead and pause the video here and take a minute to think about that. So one of the things I hope you realize is that you can use your logic to distinguish between different types of reactions just based on the reactants. For example, let's say you only have one reactant. That has to be a decomposition reaction. And if you have a reaction with two elements, the only option for you is synthesis. When you start to involve a compound, like a single replacement reaction where you have a compound and an element, then Single replacement is a likely candidate, but it could also be synthesis. And so when you get into more complex reactions, you have to do more deducing to figure out the type of reaction that you're working with. In a synthesis reaction, you always have two reactants that produce one product. That's why it's called synthesis, because you're making one thing. You're putting two things together to make one thing. The decomposition reactions, you only have one reactant, and you'll make two or more products, sometimes three. Combustion is going to be a hydrocarbon and oxygen and making carbon dioxide and water. And single replacements are one compound with one element to create two products where an ion has switched places. So the element that was there at the beginning is now part of a compound. And one of the ions that was in the compound at the beginning is now an element by itself. And then finally, double replacement, you have two compounds at the beginning and two compounds at the end, and they have switched ion partners. One of the things that you'll be doing in lab today is testing for gases that are formed as a result of your experiment. And you're going to be doing a glowing or burning splint test. And um, I guess this is like a weird YouTube meta moment because there's another YouTube video you can watch where we demonstrate what these look like. Um, so go ahead and refer to that if you want to. But in the meantime, we have these two kinds of tests. So first, what is a glowing slint and what is a burning slint? A burning slint is perhaps obviously a piece of wood that is on fire. A glowing slint is the splint after it's been on fire and you blow it out and there's some glowing embers. So that's a glowing slint. And you're gonna use the glowing and burning slint test to check for the presence of these different gases, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen. So oxygen, because it supports combustion, it will reignite a glowing splint. Carbon dioxide puts out flames uh, because it does not support combustion, so it will extinguish a burning splint. And finally, for hydrogen, if you have a burning splint and it comes into contact with hydrogen gas, it makes a small explosion. So you have an opportunity for a small explosion today.
I'll point out here and again when we get to safety that you will need to have a beaker of water standing by to put all of your burning things into after they are done burning so that they are out safely. Okay, I want to point out one other thing on this slide and that is there's a difference between observation and inference. And so in this case, for example, let's say I had a glowing splint and I put it into my test tube and it reignites. My observation is that my glowing splint reignited. My inference is that oxygen must be present. So be careful on your lab report for each of the experiments that you're doing, you're asked to write down observations which are straight without drawing any conclusions, just what did I see in front of me, and then inference, which is what that means. You will be writing a lot of chemical equations today for all the different reactions, and so just a review of what we talked about last time with writing equations when you have a balanced chemical equation, an ionic equation, and then a net ionic equation. This time we're gonna do a precipitation reaction between silver nitrate and sodium chloride. And this is actually a double replacement reaction, so you can see the um, ion switching places. So silver was partnered with nitrate, and now in the products it's partnered with chloride. When we turn this from the balanced chemical equation into the ionic equation, we're going to dissociate all of these ionic compounds that are dissolved. So our silver nitrate gets dissociated, our sodium chloride gets dissociated, but our silver chloride does not because it's a solid, it's not soluble in the water. And our sodium nitrate does get dissolved. All of those are ionic compounds that are soluble and they are strong electrolytes and that's why when we write the ionic equation we write them with the separated ions. Now if we want to look at the net ionic equation, we actually have two spectator ions here. They are sodium and nitrate. And so you can see they repeat on the left side and on the right side. We eliminate those in the net ionic equation and just include the stuff where the chemistry is happening. For your lab report, you're going to have to write out the balanced chemical equations for each reaction. Make sure that you write out the reactants that are given to you, we tell you what those are, and also their states of matter, and then use your observations to figure out what the products are with their states of matter. And then there's some cases where there may be some other product and you have to kind of figure out what it was based on the reactants and the product that you know. Make sure that the equation is balanced on both sides so that you have you're honoring the law of conservation of matter. And um, then for your molecular level diagrams, make sure that you're illustrating the complete ionic equation. So if something is a solid, then you ought to show it as a solid where the ions are connected to each other. It might be like gathered at the bottom of the beaker. If something's dissociated, then you wanna show clearly that the ions are separate from each other, that they're floating around in the solution, etc. As you're doing the experiment, make sure you're filling out the data table as you go along. Observations for what you see, inferences for what you think is happening based on what you see. And then there will be sometimes maybe where you have to repeat a reaction if you're not sure what happened. So you can do that if you have time. There's a lot of safety stuff today. And there's kind of two really important things that I want to point out. The first is you're going to be working with flames today. So you need to make sure if you have long hair, it's tied back and you remove anything flammable from wherever you're working. So you shouldn't have a bunch of papers lying around. And the other thing is you want to have a beaker of water, or a cup of water nearby so that anytime you have a match, you can just put it in that cup of water, make sure it's totally extinguished before you put it in your trash. Um, the second thing is you're gonna be burning magnesium. And magnesium makes a very, very bright light when it burns. So bright that you can't look at it directly. So you need to be really careful when you're doing the magnesium that you are not looking at it directly because it can damage your eyes. You should follow the normal rules for PPE and um, consider all the chemicals that you're using in the lab as chemicals and not suitable for other household uses, even if they might be chemicals that you would otherwise use. Um, a bunch of the things that you're using are irritants or corrosive. The hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide and lime water notably are corrosive. And so make sure that you're near a sink so that you can use that if you need to wash it off of your hands. 
Make sure also that you're wearing your goggles. It's really important that you're wearing your goggles and gloves and aprons today so that you don't spill any of this on your skin because it can burn you. Okay, that's everything for today. Enjoy the lab. Have a great day.